Will I become like the religious kind of personality, like very serious? And I said, the only thing you'll become is wet. <laughs> Other than that, nothing will change. Is religion good for the world? On the one hand, religion brings morality, religion brings charity, religion brings all sorts of value to the world. And at the other hand, religion brings war and division and hatred and anti-Semitism. <laughs> so, so is it good for the world or not? No, it's not. What else do we want to talk about? <laughs> Don't you love simple answers? Let, let, let's take a closer look. Without God, the world has no direction, no purpose, and no soul. Without the Ten Commandments, the world has no instruction, no right and wrong, doesn't know up from down. Is that religion? From what I'm picking up, this man whose life we are celebrating, Jeff or Zev, he was not a religious man. He was a godly man. Much better. When a Jew puts on tefillin, is he being religious? I don't think so. He's being Jewish. A woman goes to a mikveh, is she being fanatically religious? No, she's just being Jewish. And the proof is, a guy who puts on tefillin doesn't become any more Jewish. A woman goes to a mikveh, doesn't become more Jewish. Actually, a woman once said to me, I'm thinking of using the mikveh, but I don't know, if I do that, what will I become? <laughs> she meant, will I become like the religious kind of personality, like very serious, and will I become spiritual, will I become... I said, the only thing you'll become is wet. Other than that, nothing will change. You're a Jew now, you'll be a Jew when you come out of the mikveh as well. When a Jew does something Jewish, why does it get a title? Oh, you're eating Jewish now. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm Jewish. <laughs> I'm at a, a, a dinner fundraising, crowded room. I'm holding a cocktail and I'm talking to somebody and this woman comes up behind me and in a shrill voice, she says in Yiddish, Rebbe, my son is marrying a non-Jew. Talk to him. I turn around. She's about that big but a very powerful personality. And her son is standing right there. <laughs> the whole room heard her say this. The whole room turns around. <laughs> and I thought, this poor guy, he must be so embarrassed. But I look at him and he's, he's not. So I took the cue from him and I said, really, you're marrying an Anjou? He says, yeah. I said, so you'll be the Jew in the family. He says, yeah. I said, so when they have a question about Judaism, you'll, you'll answer it. He says, yeah. I said, do you feel like you know enough to be able to answer the questions? He said, what is there to know? And he was sincere. <laughs> Yeah, what is there to know? I said, whoa, five books of Moses, 22 books of prophets, 60 volumes of Talmud, and about a million customs. <laughs> this is, you can't make up stories like this. 
he says, oh. I said, you know what would be a great idea? Before you get married, you have a few months, go off to Israel, go into a yeshiva for a couple of months, catch up, do a little learning, cram a little bit, so that when they ask you questions, your non-Jewish family, you'll be able to answer, answer like a mensch. He says, that's a great idea. <laughs> he went off to Israel, <laughs> After a week in yeshiva, he thought, oh, this is not such a good idea. <laughs> but do you see the degree of innocence and the degree of ignorance? This was not a rebellious kid. He had no idea. I had another guy, nice Jewish boy, and uh, I knew him when he was in Talmud Torah. I, I, I meet him as a grown-up, and he says, I converted to Christianity. I said, why? He says, they have the greatest books. <laughs> now, this is a true story. They have great books. I said, like what? He says, Psalms. Isaiah, he never heard that as a Jew. <laughs> so is religion necessary or is it important that a Jew should know what a Jew is? So here's the, here's the true story. Judaism was never a religion. It's not a religion. And it mustn't be a religion. Religions developed out of Judaism, but Judaism is not a religion for a number of reasons. Firstly, religion for all practical purposes means living a certain way in order to gain favor above, whatever that favor is each religion according to its, to its style. Religion means living a certain way to get spiritual benefits. Judaism was never. You read the Ten Commandments, you go through Torah from cover to cover, it doesn't say anything about going to heaven. Nothing. In fact, the Torah begins, in the beginning God created heaven and earth, and that's the last time heaven is mentioned. The rest of the Torah is about earth. So in Judaism, going to heaven is not the goal. Because, you know, to get there you have to die. That's not a Jewish idea. Don't go anywhere. Where are you going? All right. If you can't be here, where are you going to go? Miami. <laughs> if you can't be here, you go there. But that's not a goal. That's a retirement home. <laughs> no, it really is. Can you imagine Jeff in a retirement home? For a week, maybe. But, you know, enough already. Let's get back to work. The souls in heaven are waiting impatiently for Moshiach to come so that they can come back to earth. So why are you going to heaven when they're coming back here? Don't go to heaven. Just stay here. There is no better place. Uh, when you say about a person who passed away, he's in a better place. Just from the tone, you know it's not Jewish. He's in a better place now. That doesn't sound Jewish. If it was a Jewish idea, they would say, he's better place. That sounds Jewish. But it's not true. There is no better place. There's no better place. It's comfortable. It's pleasant. It's safe. 
but for a guy who was a leader and a builder and a doer, enough already. A month, two months, two years. He wants to come back. He's got so much more to build and so much more to do. So, going to heaven has never been our goal. And in that sense, Judaism is not a religion. Instead of wanting to go to heaven, which is the goal of most religions, Judaism wants to bring God down to earth. Why? Because that's what God asked. That's what the Torah is all about. God telling us how to bring him down to earth, not how we can get to heaven. When you're doing what God needs, instead of having him do for you what you need, that's not exactly a religion. You've got to call that something else. And that's not spiritual. That's godly. What God needs is godly. If you're doing what he needs, you're being godly. Much better than religious. Because religion can become very selfish. It can become very competitive. It can become self-serving, arrogant, exclusive, etc., etc. All the horrors that religion brings. If we're here to make the world godly, so that God can be comfortable and welcome and, and, and uh, enjoy his creation, that doesn't leave anybody out. If the world is supposed to be comfortable and inviting to God, it's got to be the whole world. Nobody is left out. Of course, Jews do it in a Jewish way, non-Jews do it in a non-Jewish way, but everyone has got to do it. Otherwise, the world is not what God needs it to be. So if you're in the service of God, you are much more open-minded. As open-minded as God. It's a very different thing from religion. So, God is necessary, the commandments are necessary, God's morality is necessary, but religion, it can go either way. So Judaism is not a religion. And Jews are not religious. Have you noticed that? <laughs> not only aren't we religious, we were never good at it. Some, some nations are religious by nature. We're not. Forty days after God spoke to us personally and said, make no graven images, 40 days later we said, wonder what would happen if we do. <laughs> so we made a graven image. So God said, you guys are impossible. I just said, don't do that. And Moshe said, Moshe said, in our defense, yeah, isn't it great? They're such stiff-necked people. And God said, yeah, you're right. I like that. Stiff-necked people is the opposite of religious people. <laughs> religious people bend to God's will. We don't. We correct him. <laughs> you didn't mean do nothing on Shabbos, did you? Just waste a day like that? Come on. You couldn't have meant that. You meant spend time with your family, right? Is it? And God says, no. No, just don't do any work on Shabbos. And we say, yeah, spend time with your family. God says, read my lips. <laughs> Whether you have a family, you don't have a family, don't do work on Shabbos. And we say, why not? I make the most money on Shabbos. I gotta, finally got a day off, I can't go golf. So, 
Why do I need to keep Shabbos? And Judaism says, you don't. You don't need to keep Shabbos for a very simple reason. You didn't create the world in six days. So what is Shabbos? God rests on Shabbos. And since we are his children, he would like us to join him. When he's keeping Shabbos, can you please do it with me? So he needs you to keep Shabbos, not you need to keep Shabbos. And what does he need it for? <laughs> what are you asking me? <laughs> How am I supposed to understand what he needs and why he needs? He's God. But I do know this. He needs it for a godly reason. That's pretty impressive. This leads us to an even more important and very basic and very timely distinction between Judaism and religion. One of the things that we are suffering from today, I say we, but I really mean young, young people, very young people. I, I can imagine saying to my grandson, you, you have to be careful not to eat a non-kosher candy. You have to be, you have to be Shomer Shabbos. You, you have to keep kosher. You have to be honest. You have to honor your parents. You have to get good grades. You have to go to yeshiva. You have to get in time to the minion. And I can imagine my grandson saying, I thought about it and, uh, actually, I don't need any of that. <laughs> You keep telling me I need to, and I, I really don't. I don't need to. Why do I need to? And if I was religious, what would I say? Oh yes, you have to. You know what happens to people who sin. Oh, so now I'm bullying him. <laughs> now I'm trying to scare him into behaving. This is not Judaism. That's religion. Religion says you are obligated. You must. You have to. What's going to be with you? Get your act together. Be a mensch. It used to work. It's not working. Not only religion. Society. Every child is told, got to go to school. You have to go to school. You have to get good grades. You have to get a job. You have to get a house. And then you have to pay the mortgage. <laughs> and the taxes. And the insurance. And you know what people are saying today? It took a long time, but they finally came up with it. You know, there's this guy who was suing his parents for giving birth to him without his consent. <laughs> I think he's got a good case. <laughs> you didn't ask me. You went ahead and gave birth to me, and now I have to pay the mortgage? How did that happen? You gave birth to me. You paid a mortgage. You know, that kind of makes sense. As scary as it sounds, it really makes sense. I didn't ask for this. You made me, so you pay for me. Doesn't that make sense? Anyway, the, the, uh, the case was thrown out. Now, this is real. Both his parents are lawyers. He didn't have a chance. <laughs> but, but they threw it out of court because the parents said, we were trying to consult with you. We couldn't find you. <laughs> but now you're hearing it even from young children, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds. You tell them to put a book away or to put their shoes away 
And their answer is, I didn't ask to be born. Of course, parents panic, run, rush the kid off to, to therapy, and put him on medication for anxiety, depression, and suicidal thoughts. <laughs> if your child or grandchild ever says to you, I didn't ask to be born, don't give him medicine. Tell him, neither did I. Because <laughs> it's true, you didn't ask to be born. And you know why you didn't ask to be born? Because you don't need to be. If you needed, you would have asked. You don't need to be. Isn't that a shocking thought? Doesn't it sound a little suicidal? <laughs> you don't need to be here. You don't need to be born. You didn't ask to be born. If you were asked, you would have said, no thanks. I need this like a hole in the head. So look at what's going on. Your parents tell you you have to. You have to. What's going to be with you? Get your act together. Get a life. Get a job. Grow up. You have to. Then you listen to the commercials. Things you never heard of, you have to have. You have to. You don't have one of those? Medications. Do you sometimes feel a little something in the back of your throat? Well, you need this medicine. Order now. It might kill you, but it'll take away that. <laughs> really, they go through five minutes of warnings. This may make you blind, it may make you dizzy, it may make you may give you a stroke or a and after five minutes of that, they say, so what are you waiting for? Order now. Order now, we'll send you a month's worth for free. Because my, my reaction is, if a month's worth is not enough, this is not a good medicine. At any rate, the commercials all tell you what you need. You need. So you figure, okay, I'll go for therapy. You know what happens when you go for therapy? You come in and you say, I need help with my anxiety. Can you help me with my anxiety? And the therapist says, you think you're suffering from anxiety? Your mother never wanted you. <laughs> you hate your brother. It's eating you up. So you need much more than you think you need. I said, oh God, can I get away from this? <laughs> so then you say, all right, that's it. I'm going into religion. Right? Religion brings you peace of mind, comfort. No, it doesn't. You come and you say, I've got so much anxiety. I've got so many worries. I have so many burdens. I'm looking for an answer. And what do they tell you? You think you have problems in this life? <laughs> Wait till you get to Oh, is it? You need to be saved from what happens up there. You need to do this and you need, and it just piles on. More needs. What do you do? Where do you go? That's what Judaism is. You know what Judaism actually says? Uh, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? What a relief. I thought I had. From all these rules and regulations, you must, you have to. It felt like I had created the world and it was all my fault. It's not. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Relax. What's your problem? 
he's got problems. He created a world and it just doesn't cooperate. <clears throat> In the beginning means before you had any needs. Before there was you and before you had needs, he created the world. So who has needs? You? <laughs> you didn't even ask to be born. So if your child says, I didn't ask to be born. This is a wise, mature insight into reality. Don't get nervous about it. Agree with him. We don't ask to be born. And if we don't ask to be born, how is it that it's my responsibility? I have to, I must. No, no. The creator of the world has a need. We don't. In fact, all the needs we do have are not ours. I need to eat. I need to eat. I need to stop eating. And I can't. <laughs> I don't know if you have this problem, but it's pretty common. I need to eat? It was not my idea. If I designed myself, I would have a more efficient, <laughs> I would have a more efficient existence that doesn't need to eat. So why do I need to eat? I don't know. It's not my idea. God created me with a need to eat. So really, he needs me to eat. I don't. That's Judaism. This is not religion. This is simply a realization of where we fit in. We didn't create the world and therefore we don't have needs. The creator created the world and he has a valid need. And amazingly, the fulfillment of his need depends on us. That's, that's amazing. So what is a mitzvah? A mitzvah means God depends on you to do what he needs done. So on the one hand, it's such a relief. It's so liberating. My problem? I don't have any problems. My needs, they're not mine. It makes our burden so much lighter. And on the other hand, I can do for him. Every minute of the day, there is something I can do for him. And once I get to heaven, I won't be able to do that. Well, then I'm staying here. Leave me here so that I can do for you. So the compliment, the significance that that gives us, you can fulfill his need. And on the other hand, they're not your needs. Isn't that amazing? That's Judaism. The problem with religion, besides starting wars, it burdens you and it puts you at the center of the universe. You have needs. God is only here to help you with your needs. He's your valet. He's your butler or your savior or your healer or your lover or your protector. But he's busy full time taking care of you. You are the center of the world. This is not Judaism and it's not healthy. Serve God with joy. Does that make sense now? If you're trying to be religious, there will be no joy. You get the impression that a person who's religious doesn't know how to smile? Aside from Chabad.
Chabad doesn't fit any of the images, but as as a as a as a default position, if you're really religious, you're very serious, borderline depressed. <laughs> doesn't it, doesn't it seem that way? How can you be religious and happy at the same time? Something's wrong. <laughs> you see somebody happy, you know they sinned. Because <laughs> if you don't sin, what are you happy about? <laughs> That's religious. We are not religious. We're not good at it. We never agreed to be religious. We agreed to serve him. Serve him means do what he needs. That's a pleasure. That's inspiring. That's uplifting. I can do for you? That is much better than doing for myself. So, if du es Hashem besimcha, if we are here to serve Him, that's joy. That's joy. And if I can make that assumption, from what you're telling me about Jeff White. He was not religious. He was here to serve his creator. And you know, if you're serving your creator, while you're at it, you kind of serve your community also a little bit. And as long as you're serving your community, so you serve your family a little bit. You're in the serving mode. Is there anything you need? Final con conclusive story. I had this couple, marriage counseling. They were brilliant in their evil. <laughs> I, I mean, I've heard people cut each other down. Most couples who are having trouble become brilliant. But this couple, wow. They were so good at it. They would walk in before they even sat down. Didn't you tell her last week that she shouldn't? Well, she did it again. No, I didn't. You stop. It was just week after week. It was hard to listen to. So I, I came up with a brilliant idea. I said, next week, let's get together at the kosher deli in public. I figured they'll tone it down. <laughs> we get together at the deli. There are about 20 customers sitting at, their t at the tables. It made absolutely no difference. They launched into their attacks and counterattacks. It was as if nobody was in the room. Finally, they're exhausted. And the husband says, I think we have a serious problem here. <laughs> I said, actually, it's not that serious. He says, really? I said, look, how serious can it be? 20 people here heard all about it. They don't care. <laughs> not important to them. I've listened to this for months. I don't care. And you told me your mother doesn't want to hear about it anymore. Your own mother doesn't care. How important can this be? They were quiet for a moment. And then for the first time in months, the wife said, so, uh, so how are you? Do you see what just happened here? They never asked me how I was because they had a serious problem. They had big needs. When I suggested that maybe it's not so serious and it's not such a, like, so what else is there to talk about? Oh yeah, how are you? <laughs> All of a sudden I existed. Do you see what happens? 
when we relieve ourselves of all these burdens, of all these needs, I must, I have to, I got to, I... Stop it. You don't. You're not the creator. But you can do amazing things for the creator. So lighten up and serve God and be Jewish, not religious. We have to spread this message because God has gotten lost in the shuffle. At best, God is there to serve you. And that can't be. That puts too much burden on me. And I didn't even ask to be born. <laughs> right? So, here's your choice in life according to Judaism. It's very simple. Do you prefer to be needy or would you rather be needed? No brainer. We are needed. Our needs, eh, didn't even ask to be born. So if I don't ask to be born because I don't need to be born, and yet I am born, the natural question is, if I don't need this, who does? You've answered all of life's questions. I don't need this, so who does? I don't need, somebody needs me. That is so much better. So don't get religious. Get godly. Don't become religious, just be a Jew. Jews have opportunities to serve God that nobody else has. So what are we waiting for? Actually, we're not waiting. He's waiting. So what are we keeping him waiting for? So when we talk about the coming of Mashiach, we all know what we want. We want Mashiach because then we'll have, um, you know, all the goodies that will come. If you think we need Mashiach, we who did not create the world, can you imagine how much he needs Mashiach? And I have a little sneaky suspicion. When the Rebbe said, we want Mashiach, who's we? He meant humans, and God. We both want Mashiach. Who doesn't want Mashiach? We want Mashiach. God wants more than we do, and we want for our own reasons. So the Rebbe is saying, if we want Mashiach, so where is he? If everybody agrees Mashiach should come, so where is he? That was the Rebbe's argument. So we want Mashiach. The souls in heaven want Mashiach more than we do. The creator of the world wants to see Mashiach arrive more than we do. And we catch the fever from them and say, okay, we also want. So everybody wants Mashiach. Let him come. Let him come today. We won't have to apologize for all our mistakes. We will not be embarrassed by our failures and our, by our lack of religiosity because God never wanted us to be religious. He wanted us to be Jewish, and we are. Take a look around. It's not Yom Kippur. <laughs> oh, you thought you were coming because it was Yom Kippur? No. Today is not Yom Kippur, and, and look, the room is full. What are you doing here? You needed to come here? No, you wanted to come here because it's a Jewish event. And you're Jewish. Mashiach has to be impressed with that, not disappointed. And whatever religiosity we are missing, 
He'll inspire us. He'll fix it. But we, being Jewish, are the biggest blessing to the world, to God, who is absolutely thrilled with his people. And if we miss a mitzvah here and there, whose fault is it? Who gave us this incredibly miserable history, <laughs> this impossible life? He did. He knows. And he's very impressed. Despite it all, we are so Jewish. The soul of Usher, of Zev, Jeff, has got to be thrilled beyond words. Can you imagine this happening for you? Two years later? This is really amazing. We take it for granted. Yeah, I got an invitation, I came. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not that simple. It's awesome. It's awesome. So let Mashiach come. Let him be impressed with how good we are, how Jewish we are, and religion. Let other people be religious. You just be Jewish. Thanks for listening. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal. It's questions and answers. It's conversation. It's really relaxed. It's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program. There's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best and join us for some enjoyable conversation.